At the turn of the 20th century, the Smith Stock Ship Repair Company was the biggest in the world and it was located just upriver from here at their Bullring Works in North Shields. We wanted the Year 5 pupils at Percy Main Primary School to discover more about this unique part of their industrial heritage and the part it played in the local community, in worldwide shipping and also, as some of them found out later, even their own families. It was here for over 130 years, sadly gone now. We're using a combination of research, visits to key sites and interviews with ex-employees. We hope the children can form a picture of what working life was like at Smith's. And at the end of it, come away feeling really proud that an important piece of industrial heritage was located right here, just about a mile away from their own school. Well, today's been great. We've had a real fun time under trying to understand what history is and what heritage is. And then the kids have been really learning about uh, how to be historians and how to ask questions. So obviously we wanted them to really understand a little bit about Smithstock and find out what had happened there, who worked there, what kinds of things people did and what it felt like to be there. I showed them the welder's helmet and tried to get them to explain to them the conditions that you know the guys would weld in. We were lucky to, to be able to uh, get our hands on a, a book first used from 1899 when Smith Docks was founded. And what it did was it listed what the ship was, what the repairs was, who the owner was. On average, they had 10 ships a week into the dock for repair. I didn't know what Smith Dock was and how many people worked in it and all the ships that were made. We learned how dangerous it was to work at Smith Stock. Lots of men got injured and some even died just doing their job. The most interesting fact I had learned about Smith Stock was that they had very funny nicknames such as Nappy Neck. When I went home, I told my parents that we had learned about Smith Stock and I found out that my granddad had worked there and he had the name of Stubby Fingers. I think learning about your local heritage is crucial. I think it's really good for young people to understand where they've come from. They can go back and talk to their relatives and maybe find out that some of them had a connection with Smith Stock. And of also learning about uh, how important people from this area actually are and have been, not only for the, their families, but also for the wider community and in the case of Smith Stock, for the whole country because of everything that they did during the war. So tomorrow we've, we've got half the class going over to the uh, North East Maritime Trust and they'll be seeing actually how they work on boats, how they repair boats, albeit on a smaller level. These are, these are boats rather than ships. And we'll get the other half of the group to actually physically go to what was the site of Smith Docks, have a look at the docks, have a look at the area, what it was like, and get them really to get them down at grassroots level to have a, to have a look at you know, what the site was like. We started off, the intention of the Maritime Trust was to uh, maintain our heritage boat building skills and rescue those um, local wooden historic vessels that would have otherwise been chopped up and burned. Uh, and we explained a few things that were at their sort of level. Ship's lights, uh, ship's wheel. The, the fastenings used in uh, timber boat building and so on. Also using the plane, um, to straighten the piece of timber up, um, the flat bit drill um, and the brace and bit to drill through. Well, the tools that we the tools that we used and the methods that we used date back a uh, long, long, long way back. In the in earlier days, they would have used uh, wrought iron nails, but they do they rust and they fail. So it does. The techniques go back way, way back. We thought I thought that the children. Um would again appreciate, appreciate seeing a boat out of the water, the, the simple way in which it's brought into and taken out of the boathouse. Um, we showed them up on the mezzanine, which is where we do all the, a lot of the joinery work, uh, which gives them a better view of the ship. At the North East Maritime Trust, we learned a nail drill and use a plane on some wood. I liked it when we got a chance to sit on the sailing boat and pretend we were out at sea. There were loads and loads of different tools that are used when building boats. The nails they used are copper so they don't rust. I liked when we got the chance to steer the boat using the wheel and the compass. We saw the fishing boat slid into the water. 
The World War I Memorial is very close to our school and I didn't even know it was there. And I never knew that Smith's Dock was the largest dry dock in the world. At the War Memorial, we took rubbings of the men's names and researched them back online at school. We're incredibly lucky today to have um, Alan and Joyce um, from Smithstock to actually come and work with the children and to um, receive their questions. We started off by um, kind of talking about North Shields as a, a sense of place really, a sense of belonging for the children, which they really identified with. Um, it was lovely to kind of hear at the start about how They've taken their learning home with them and they've chatted to their parents and their grandparents and they've discovered many links with the docks. Um, it was wonderful to hear about the different stories that they told today. Today we thought about all our grandparents and the questions we would like to ask them. We learned how to be good interviewers and get the information we need. We met Joyce and Alan who used to work at Smith's Dock and had the chance to interview them. Now this mallet has been cut short on one end and it's still long on the other end. And the idea of it short is so we can get in tight areas. And these are the irons that you finish with. They've got a thicker blade, so that's got a blade where you go onto the oakum like that. So you're taking the oakum and you shove it forward and you tap it in as much as that. I thought I'd won the lottery. I got paid £5.50 <laughs> a week which was a lot of money. When Alan said it was busy and there was a lot of ships waiting to go into dock, we used to have to work a lot of overtime, um, which was very good because we got well paid for it as well. We learned so much from the interviews, like how Alan was nicknamed the general and the different tools he made. So by the end of the session, the kids would have learned all about um, a real life perspective. They gained an awful lot of confidence as well. All the children were involved and you can tell that their learning has increased dramatically. Today we've been looking at the uh, work that had been done at the Maritime Trust, which was absolutely fascinating. And building on that, what we did was actually make a range of different boats uh, using a range of different materials. So there was old bottles, old milk bottles, bits of wood. We discussed why certain materials were actually used for construction, that some materials were much better suited than others. So we've looked at that, we've looked at a thing called a spherical ball and used that as a, a way of powering. It's, it's really like a modern day propeller that we've used, except it can be controlled by an, an iPad. Well, what we've tried to do is link it in with Smithstock and the locality, the fact that this area was one of the most productive uh, designing and building of ships in the world. So you're bringing it up to the modern day using new technology but also linking it very carefully with the heritage that is deeply ingrained in North Shields. Today we've been thinking about how the ships at Smith's dock would have been built. We've designed our own ships using different materials. Some weren't very good at keeping the ships afloat. We use water tanks to test different ships. It was really fun using the sparrow balls to power the boat. I think it's been an amazing opportunity for the children to work with heritologists from North Shields. Um, the fact that they've been able to learn about something that's really close to the local area with Smith's Dock. And we did have a lot of children go home and ask their parents and their grandparents about it and they were able to come back in and say, oh, my granddad worked there, my uncles worked there. We've had a couple of children say that their uncle was a welder, their granddad had a nickname and it was really nice for them to be able to explore that and have that history in their own home that they didn't know about. I think it's really important that the children learn about their local heritage and the history of where they live so that they can have that sense of pride about where they belong and I think the fact that they found out that the Smith's Dock was the largest dry dock in the world has blown their minds and that, that you do see that sense of pride on their face. Finding that sense of pride in their learning and how they can move that forward and maybe drive their career aspirations in the future.